Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're taking a look at Granite. Now, I've done some testing with him in the Guild Trials at a 200 deficit, and I just wanted to go through some of the teams. This guy is actually, I feel like he's a broken character in that I can't use him optimally right now because he has gear. I honestly think this guy will see play ungeared. That's my honest opinion, I think, and that to me is the definition of a broken character. When things like, you know, anything that you have to play less than what you can get them to, I feel like is a broken mechanic, but I love this one, so it's pretty good. We'll jump in and I'll show, I'll show you what I mean. So over here in the arena of trials, so if we go trial leaderboard here, uh, this, was my, this was my attempt here. So these are the ones here. Keep in mind, the first couple teams, I forgot you could change the artifacts, so I've just had whatever artifacts on. Like, I don't even know what these guys had. Like, Drape there. What did he have here? They're like, why is he even on that? I don't know. I apologize. I forgot about it. But um, this one here... It's all about his 30 Syndrome. At the start of battle, uh, he marks all enemies with the mark of purification or whatever it's called. Um, and then if they are still surviving allied heroes on the battlefield, they will additionally trigger his Sand Vortex upon his death. And what I used him for mostly in here, and what I think he'll be used for a lot, um, but, with, but minus gear, because minus gear makes him more reliable for this well, this strategy is that you put him in the front row, hope he dies, uh, and then instantly activates the vortex, basically stunning three enemies and stopping them from generating energy. And that is big at the very start of the battle. You're basically trading one of your heroes for three of theirs. Now yours is dead, there's a CC'd, but it's a really, really strong CC. Um, when we look at this and it becomes a six second petrification um, and they also can't recover energy. So it's honestly really solid, and that's pretty much what I use him for every time here. So in this one, um, we I went with the Raku team um, with just Raku and Pippa, but my idea was that Raku would shred, he would die quick. Raku would shred through the enemies um, that he stuns, and then pretty much that would be it. And that's pretty much the way it works. So this is at a 200 deficit. The enemies are at 500. So let's put it on one time speed. And you can see he basically instantly died, petrified them, and look how much damage Raku did to them in that period of time. Like... They're pretty close to dropping. And Pippa didn't even get the Tassie. If Pippa got the Tassie, it would have been even stronger. But as you can see, we can go ahead and execute. Um, Gorvo jumping around really helps this team as well to take some aggro. But pretty, pretty simple there. And like I said, he, you just want him to die. And then it's GG's from there. So really solid. Let's go in and let's go to the next one. I, I do think this guy is going to be one that everyone gets ascended, 30 signature item, um, and you can play around with him like that. And then he's a really good substitute in a lot of teams. You, you get the gist. We end up killing the Thorin. Um, let's go into battle two. So this one, this battle I really struggled with. Uh, so I just Lucretia cheesed it basically. So <laughs> so judge me if you will. But I, I, had, to get, I had to get the W somehow. Um, so this one, yeah, I mean... I, I just had to do something. You can see there, he does stun them and give Lucretia some breathing time though, um, just in that space. And she actually kills them before they come out of petrification. So it's honestly not a bad assist that he puts into there. I think he's going to be a good assist in Lucretia 5 pool as well, but it doesn't really need too much assist. But that was that one. Moving on from that, we j this was... And I think he will be able to work as a substitute in Iron's teams as well. Anything, anything that takes a little bit of time, basically any team I can see him being valuable in because if he dies, you get that CC, it buys you the time, but also it buys you more time than the petrification because the enemies can't recover energy for that period of time, meaning that... It's, it, it buys you that extra time that they would have had that energy, so they've still got to ramp up. It's just, it's absolutely brilliant. So let's check this one out. Um, as you'll see, I think he, I don't know if he gets dropped quick here. I think there was one battle where he may have survived. Okay, there we go. Dead. Boom. Straight into the stuns. And now they get no energy, and it buys irons that time to go ahead and ult and then generate another one. And we've still got Elbedo's protection as well on top of that. So it's, <laughs> I actually really love this guy. I love it because he's very simple to use <laughs> and uh, you get some good effect out of him. 
and he looks cool. So like, and and I like these units that are like going to have some use around the board. Um, he may end up being garbage in an end game player. Say, no, he's trash. He's not usable anywhere. But I think he's going to be pretty decent in a lot of teams um, in certain matchups just to get you that upper hand and buy you some time. Um, I really liked the Raku idea, the first team. That was the first team I came up with because I, I just think it like, it has the good synergy. Now, you'll see in the next two teams as well, well th this one sort of kind of works. Uh, I kind of like the way this works. So it's in the Ulna Grizzul team, but the thing that he does is, is like at the start, Grizzul's protected by Ulna, but then you can let him die and then he can start and he can petrify the enemies, which gives Grizzul more time to ramp up. I also put Grizzul away so you know, it, it has some effect. We got we got the Odin in there for the portals as well. Um, but you'll see how this one goes too. So there you go. He runs right up, gets killed, and then petrifies them all right in the back mid. Like a really solid petrification. Um, and like I said, they're still stunned. And they just come out then, gives Odin time to ramp up, and Odin can then start portaling them, getting more stuns. I just feel like he has a lot of... I, I'm sorry, I'm excited. I, I hope that... Like, the pro players don't tell me he's crap because I, I really like this strategy with him. But like I said, I'm definitely going to test him on Chiasmus at 30 Sing Tritum with no gear because I think it would be more reliable in a lot of cases um, because you're just going to get it quicker, which is really nice. So that is that one. Um, and then, yeah, we we, pr we pretty much ramped up to the point where it's just GG's from here, but uh, you get it. You get it. And we can skip the battle. Okay, the next one is one that I really like. I think this is a really good uh, team to implement him because, and once again, better if he has zero gear, because what you really need to get to is that first Mihira ult. Um, and if you're struggling to get your Mihira ult off fast enough, and this guy can stun them before she has to get it off, it buys your whole team that time, considering your whole team is fairly squishy. So this was one of my first ideas. I just didn't get it to work as well. A lot of the teams had annoying thing. Like I had to put a ton of CC in this team um, because the Oscar obviously wipes his glasses and gets uh, cleansed of the um, CC. So we needed a lot of CC running the whole time. Um, I feel like if the Oscar wasn't there, you could have done this without the Khazard very easily. Um, but because he was there, we sort of needed that Khazar. And as you can see, those guys are still petrified. They just came out. And then, I mean, this team's pretty self-sufficient. Like, it's going to do its thing. It's going to do it well. The only issue was if Oscar was going to come out and like he just did there and ult on our face. But we had a pretty reliable run. Luckily there, he was teleporting back. There was a little glitch where Mihira probably should have turned around for her ult. But I think, like, the actual body of... Uh, Oscar like moved before the image did or something because she she faced the right way which was pretty lucky there but um you get the gist and this one like I just kept I literally just kept changing Kazard's um artifact because of, like it got so close and with these things if you use the exact same units with the exact same artifacts you get the same RNG so I just kept changing artifacts until we got the RNG that we needed and the way this one went but I think he has a lot of potential in a lot of these teams like I said I I'm looking forward to testing the broken side of him when we can get him with our gear on 30 signature item. I think it's going to be so cool. Um, and like literally, you just need Mythic. Mythic 30 signature item and then you have a really, really solid unit to just give you early CC. Um, and like I said, we the, and like there's some teams that he won't work too well in. Um, so like the, the teams that I've used sort of make use of it really well. Because like this one, you, you're pretty much getting to that Iron's ult and you win. Uh, this one here, you get to Lucretia, like you saw in this replay. Uh, he st turned them to stone, Lucretia two ults, they're dead before they come out of stone. This one, you turn them to stone so that you can quickly win with Raku. This one here was a bit different. Um, this one was more to get the early ramp up. I, I don't think he's optimal in this team, but it wasn't too bad. But this one, basically just get that early CC so you can get Mihira. And then once you get Mihira's ult, you're pretty much cycling and you're fine with this team. So like I said, I feel like he's going to have a lot of uses. I'm really excited. I was having, I had a lot of fun actually testing this guy because <laughs> probably because he looks so cool and I just really love his design. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Like I said, we'll do more testing when he comes to global over on Kiasma. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.